Hello and welcome to A Celtic World, the YouTube channel and podcast that unites the worldwide fan base of Celtic. And like the real world, we're not going to agree on everything, I suspect. We all just lived through a crazy emotional couple of hours yesterday. And now, when there's four of us at least, when Ian arrives, we'll be sitting in a circle and tossing around our interpretations, reactions and views. We will, of course, all come together at the end, as we always do. One big happy gang. And who's in our happy gang? We've got Stephen in Sydney. How are you doing, Stephen? Yeah, I'm all right, Gav. Um, nothing, uh, a fairly substantial hangover all day today. So I'm at the stage now where the hangover itself is worn off and I'm just knackered. So, um, so I guess it's just a, um, just as a result of uh, being out and having one too many Guinnesses last night uh, and all the gastrointestinal issues that go with it. Well, what a delightful start to entertain <laughs> the thousands with. Brian, how is your gastrointestinal issues? No, no, no worse than normal. I didn't have a, quite a dry <laughs> Sunday yesterday. Uh, yeah, completely dry Sunday yesterday. So yeah, all good, man. What about yourself? I'm fine, but I'm trying to manage the dogs barking. We live on a road that runs to the hospital, and when the sirens go past, our dogs start howling, and then that brings all the other dogs of the neighbourhood. Uh, into it so that's all about the change this year when we move house so hopefully I will be not using the mute button quite so much all right so we're here to share our views you too can share your views in the live chat if you're watching live or in the comment section if after the event also of course feel free to subscribe for more of this and uh, like that smash button Right, Brian? Smash it. <laughs> so, all right. Well, before we get into the nitty gritty of the game, let me do a couple of things. Let me put this up. And we'll have a quick look in the comments. And you'll see that many of the regulars are here, the usual suspects. Who's a snitch? John Clements, Michael Ross. Plunge McNugget, Patrick McLaughlin in the house, Christophe Georges, Pork Chop Express left a whole bunch of comments but won't be here with us. He's missing the live show. All right, gents. So, obviously, there's loads to talk about. Uh, sorry, this is a bit untidy. There's the menu, no need for that. <laughs> Glasgow Derby followed by Celtic social media. I'd like to start with a kind of a bird's eye view. And a good way to start with that, I would suggest, is looking back at what was said on Monday's, on Thursday's show, which was this. A win for us is very good news for the title. A draw is pretty good news for the title, and a loss is pretty disastrous for the title. Is that a fair summary, Paul? It's spot on. So this must be a, a an episode of celebration, celebrating pretty good news for the title, Stephen. Would you like to open the first champagne bottle? Yeah, like I think um, it, it definitely is. Um, I think if you played what I'd said on Thursday, I, I said I would take a draw um, all day long. Now, obviously... The context of the game and how it played out, you're obviously disappointed not to win the match, uh, having been 2 0 up and then 3 2 up. Uh, we have about two minutes to go. Um, but I, I do think a point is a, is a decent result, given the fact that we've showed we've showed yesterday that we can hurt them. They, they, we, we don't have any, we shouldn't have any fears about playing them. Yeah, we, we showed we exposed our vulnerabilities quite easily in front of their own fans. Um, and we also talked on Thursday about getting their own fans on their back, which is exactly what happened. Um, so we know that they're not a great side. And and I just, I feel, you know, I was pretty, pretty pissed off after the game on, on the way home. Um, but having had 24 hours just about to, to, to mull over it, you know, you've got to, you've got to look on it as a positive. You've got to look on it as a, a, as a step in the right direction towards winning the title. 
Yeah. And uh, another thing you said was they think they're going to do a number on us. And then they were reduced to celebrating a plucky draw against a vastly superior side who were absolutely playing them off their own pitch, certainly for the first half. Mm -hmm. So I think it's fair to say, well, Brian, you tell me if you agree with this. We're happy with the destination, but we didn't enjoy the journey. Well, the the journey started off very well. You know, uh, like literally turned the TV on and big Joe Hart, long ball up. Uh, don't know who well, we'll get into the game. Let's keep it general until we start general, reviewing the yeah, game. Yeah. yeah, we're on the right track. We're on the on the right road. Well, I personally, I don't know about you, but I've been very happy today. I've been sort of dancing around the house, listening to Bell and Sebastian. Another Boy, sunny day yeah, for us. Sunny well, another day. sunny day, I was thinking. And also, the blues are still blue, which is quite handy. But... Uh, on that note, let's see some comments from their support before we get into the nitty-gritty of the game. Can you read all this? League is over now. I bottled it. It's in their hands. No chance of getting anything at their midden. Tav and Goldson again shat it against them. These are I, I obviously handpicked these because they give me the most pleasure. If, if it was Celtic 2-0 down at half time and they got a 3-3 result, it's great for them. But it was us at home with no away fans. And then the fans celebrating at the end. Not good enough. Another fella here. People happy today baffles me. Starting lineup was well off it. Defence, especially Tav, shocking. League not over, but we've missed a great opportunity. Celtic have better players. Sorry, but they do. But still shout. Another one here. We were very lucky to come away with a draw. And then the final one, which we hope is all stunningly accurate. We all know the league has gone, says this guy. We will shit it at Parkhead. So in that context, yeah, I'm reasonably happy. Let's see what the comments are saying. Anyone else talking about their emotions here? No, mostly people saying hello to each other. Howling Dog, great rock band. Corporate Cronyism, there's a new name. Morning, guys. Morning to you. Corporate Cronyism. All right. So what we're going to do about the game, well, we're going to do our usual business of um, using stills that I've saved, which took forever because there were so many incidents, as you can imagine, Stephen. So here comes Ian, just in time. Say hello to Ian while I get these pictures ready. Sorry, guys. Someone brushed past me and I rolled about in the floor for about 10 minutes, uh, crying about it after <laughs> watching the antics yesterday. I think that's what you do now. I think you uh, you get brushed and then just go down, don't you? You're very quiet to me, so I'm turning your volume up. If anyone uh, thinks there's further volume adjustments needed, let us know in the comments, please. Or I can shout. Well, don't do that after I've turned your volume up, please. That's not going to go down too well. So we're just about to go through the stills of the game, in. So we, I'm sure you will have time to convey your emotions like we all just did. Yeah, I think probably my voice will convey my emotions. Um, I think I, I shared in the group chat, uh, chat my heart monitor from the game. <laughs> so I, I'm actually taking, I'm reassessing my life based on that because uh, I don't think I can I can go on like that. I might need to do something to, to temper myself over those 90 minutes. Well, who else is reassessing their life? Possibly Tavernier or Stephen, as you like to call him, Tavernier. <laughs> Tell us a Look at the distance here. This is obviously the build up to the first goal after a few seconds. Talk us through this. Yeah, well, he just he got caught. He just got caught with his pants down, didn't he? He just um, didn't um, appreciate it. And I, really, if there's one man who know who should know how effective Maida is at pressing, it, it's him. Uh, but he, he, he almost as if he wasn't expecting Maida to press him in the first 15, 20 seconds of the game. Uh, but of course he did. Uh, and he just got himself in a terrible fine coat. I don't know if he was expecting the keeper to come, um, but he got he got his feet all in the wrong position and just tried to try to. I think he just tried to get it out of the, out of the pitch for a throw in. 
Um, and, and he's he's ricocheted it off Maida into the net. I don't think Maida knew much about it, but that's that's just typical guys in Maida. He's just so full of energy and so full of um, you know drive. Um, he, he's he's there at the right place early in the game, and, and the ball ends up in the back of the net. So it, you make your own luck in that situation. But old um, old Tav Penn, um, embarrassing again. It was fantastic uh, the way. It just flew straight into the net. I mean, if Maida had have had a chance to think about it, it wouldn't have been a goal. That's mm. a, Kick the ball really hard against Maida. That's your best chance of getting a lethal finish. Right, Brian? Yeah. Right. Okay. Anyone got anything else to say about the point? All right. Well, could you believe that this had happened so early in the game? It was completely crazy, wasn't it? What, were, what, what did anyone do? Tell us about your reactions. Brian, you start. I was screaming like a maniac. I was jumping about and I was sort of <clears throat> was waiting on it getting ruled out for whatever reason, mm. you know, but it didn't. And I was just screaming and shouting and loving life. Um, no heart monitor for me this time, uh, but it'd be interesting the next game to, to, to sort of put the heart monitor on. But no, fantastic. The, the ultimate start, silence them. You know, led, 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 sort of set the game up for us. Just the perfect start. That's what Rogers would have said. Like you know, just get out there, put, get the get the fans, make the fans quiet, and that's what we did. It was a fantastic start. Yes, Monty, you're not wrong. I do give him credit. He did fantastically well. I'm just having a wee joke about what a, how terrible he is at kicking the ball in the direction he intends to, with the requisite pace. That's all. And I'm going to say other things. If you're annoyed by that, you better stay tuned because I'm pretty sure I'm going to say a few things that annoy people. Um, why don't we start with this? <laughs> the next incident was Silva, boo, hiss, he's behind you. Uh, getting clipped by scales just outside the box. And, uh, you know, the everyone made light of it. He rolled about a course like he'd been shot. Nothing was given there. But, you know, he got in and he nicked the ball and then was knocked into by the foot of scales. I'm not saying that was a definite anything, but we might come back to that one later. Anyone got anything to say about that particular incident? Not the totality of Silver's performance. I no, I think... Sorry, you when you go... You go, mate. I was going to say, I think I think the interesting thing was we didn't actually get a free kick until the 20th minute. I think the 20th minute was when we got our first free kick. Um, so going back to that, Maida, I think we got it at an excellent time um, because what followed that, and I am shocked that he didn't take the opportunity to give that, just mm -hmm. down to the sheer volume of ridiculous 50-50s he was giving to Rangers. It was, it was almost... We, we were actually sat there in the CSC in utter disbelief as to just how many 50-50s were going their way yeah. and we were just not getting anything. So seeing that, I, you know, we did say at the time, oh, looks like lucky not to give something away. But, you know, that was one out of maybe, I don't know, we could even have been up about 18, 19 that hadn't uh, gone our way. So maybe it's evening itself out, that one decision. I'm just going to point out that Ian is joining us from a new location, hence the uh, subpar sound and vision. Um, but I'm sure everyone will forgive you for that. Yeah, no, if he really want, if he wanted to, he could have given that one, and he didn't. But he did give a ton of other ones. Let's keep it moving. This is one of the incidents where Kyogo closed down uh, their goalkeeper, effectively. Stephen, you want to talk to us about this? And... Incidents yeah, like just another, just another example of the really effective press that we that we carried out almost the whole first half, um, and he, he was very unfortunate not to get something on the ball or to not get enough on the ball to divert it back towards goal, um, and that that was the story of the first half. Really, we just got in their faces and, and forced them to make bad passes and bad decisions, uh, and kept them on the back foot the whole half. But that was that was a yeah, great pressing from Kyogo, but that's what you get from him. 
There's some very strange noises coming across. I think I'm trying to sort out my audio for you, Gav. Well, it's not producing a pleasant sensation in my ears. <laughs> there we go. All right, Matt O'Reilly slips a wee ball through to Dyson Maida, who, who forces a good save out of Butland. Do you remember this, Brian? I don't actually. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go to the end. Uh, you're roll I'll, jump, I'll jump in if you want. Thank um, you, I think it was a bad I was watching it like I think it was a bad miss. I think it was a bad miss. Um, I think he should have scored. He, he's he done it right. He's open. He's opened up his body, um, and he's got a whole far post to aim for, and he just puts it far too close to the goalkeeper and not went off pace. Um, exactly. And that was he, he should have scored. I think that's yeah. a good effort for me though. If we're honest about it, the fact that he actually got it in target instead of blazing over the bar in the context, that's a good my effort. Like poor. I mean, it's one of those ones that if it dropped Kyogo, it's in the back of the net. O'Reilly, it's in the back of the net. It's just unfortunate it was Maeda. Um, uh, shall I do my usual, uh, Brian? If you remember this, feel free to speak up. This is the uh, <laughs> this is the header from. After brilliant work, what does it say here? O'Reilly header from Kuhn Cross after great run from Maida. Remember this high header that was also saved up and high to the keeper's left? A great, a great nice a great save by Butland. I think you have to give it to him. Mm. I mean, I think everyone does everything right. Kuhn, great cross. O'Reilly gets up high, puts power into the header, and you have to put that down as a, as a good save. And I think a couple of those were looking at each other going, is this going to be one of those ones where the goalkeeper keeps them in it um and i think like along with uh, john beaton obviously i think butlin can take a lot of credit for us not winning it and then is it going to be another one of those you could easily have said games where golson commits a really obvious handball and we don't get it i'm, I'm wagering that brian recalls this moment <clears throat> Stephen, oh come on! It's the penalty. <laughs> I was like, I can't. I was emotional. I was back and forth. I was running around. Kids you weren't were watching screaming. the game. I was Brian. watching the game you, like that. You and somebody else is shared there. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's a clear and obvious penalty. Um, and Colton, as he as he does quite often, he, he jumps with a really strange action mm. and his arms are all over the place uh, and again he's done it uh, and it and it struck his it struck his arm in an unnatural position so as soon as you seen one replay of that you, you thought penalty um of course you know the referee still has to give it which is never exactly. a given um no. when we're involved um but as soon as i saw one replay of that i'm thinking oh, he's got it he's got to give this uh, and when he went over to the monitor there was really no other decision he could have gave Here's an answer um, for you, Brian. Brian was at yeah, mass I, yesterday. Uh, why did Goldson not get booked? Chris joined beaten. Okay, good question. Well, we'll come back to that later, maybe. Um, you're right. I mean, when we saw it, we all thought it was a penalty, but that's a feeling we are accustomed to having, followed mm -hmm. by a feeling of being deprived justice. So thankfully that didn't happen here. But... Uh, just because it looks like a stone wall or don't mean you're going to get it. This was Matt O'Reilly who plays for Celtic, Brian, and he scored yeah, a penalty. I, 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 yeah. I did oh. see this one. I did see okay. this one. And, and I was uh, sitting with my wife at the time and she was nervous watching the game. And I was going big sexy. Matt's going to bang this in. And lovely Pananka down the middle. Just just amazing. Just hitting the ball, the ball hitting the net. And hearing the silence was beautiful. And then, then just the net, the sound of the ball hitting the net and the little clink of maybe, I don't know, chains or something, but then, it's gorgeous. Then you, you could hear the hum tears. Well, you could hear them, you could see them, you could smell them. It's just fantastic. I was waiting on Kaiser. Uh, he said he was going to do a bit of pyro. I was sort of half expecting a, something to be thrown over the top, but it didn't didn't work out. How good were you feeling at this stage of the game, Ian? 
Um, I mean, I was probably in disbelief. I think that my overriding one was I can't believe uh, we're in this position. I, I don't want I don't want to bang on about it, but I will. The sheer volume of decisions that John Beaton was giving them, I didn't think it was sustainable. I was surprised that we got the penalty, but there was a feeling, and we kind of discussed this in the CSC before, that the VAR would be having to hold Beaton to account. And I think we saw that VAR were the ones that that kind of, you know, overruled. I don't want to jump ahead, but they're their goal, etc. So I think we were kind of cautiously optimistic. Uh, I was a bit in disbelief, but I fully expected um, them to kind of get back into the game. And I thought they would get back into the game via the referee. I think that that was the only way that we saw is kind of losing that lead was probably not from the way that we were playing because we were we were kind of doing that old Mourinho sort of like give them the ball and let them make mistakes. I think Rogers looked at them and thought these guys are terrible. Just give them the ball and let's see see what happens. Well that didn't happen immediately after the goal the penalty. What happened immediately after is that we nearly scored another. This is the Kyogo header, Steve, after a lovely move down the left. Very nice sweeping move. Then a ball to the far post. I mean, he could have got this, couldn't he? Just stick your head on it, son. Yeah, I think he just I think he just got it wrong side of the post, didn't he? Um it was um it was a bit another good chance. And um, you know, like 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 Ian was saying there, um we were we were really well on top at this point. And if we'd been three or four nothing up, you wouldn't the, the Rangers wouldn't have had much cause for complaint because we were so much better than them in the first half. Um, and and as as Ian says, the only thing that kept them with any semblance of hope was the referee, um, who, who just kept giving them inexplicable fouls for for nothing. Um, but definitely, I think, um, and we'll talk about this later on. We, we, we went on to Rudy's missed chances because one more goal uh, would yeah. have killed the game. Three nothing, it would have been dead and gone. No, no, no coming back from that, regardless of what John Beaton does. Um, so. It, it was really. I think. I think Maeda's miss was probably the worst of the lot, um, but certainly great, good save from from Butland from uh, from um, O'Reilly's header, uh, and Kyogo should probably have done a little bit better there. But um, yeah, at that point in the game, I was you know feeling really good, um, and you can't you can't not feel good when you're two nothing up away to Rangers in a, in a potential title decider. You know. I was going to say in answer to San Fran's question. But Monty jumped in. I think it was Greg Taylor's deep cross into the far post, wasn't it? For that one. Yeah, so if that had gone in, if uh, Maeda had taken his point blank shot better, could easily have been four. But if and if and if. If my auntie had a, should be my uncle. Uh, no, Not now, Gap. Now it would still be your auntie. Thank you very much. Oh, Let's just cover that off. That. She can be whatever she wants to be, Gap. Exactly, exactly, Gap. Thank you for correcting me. I apologise to all the genders in the comment section. <laughs> and then just at the end of that half, the wee fella Silva, I can barely bring myself to say his name, had a double chance, both saved by Joe Hart, I think, right? Yeah, yep. So, fantastic. Yeah. Gareth Southgate there to watch Joe Hart potentially for the England squad and he did his chances no harm there. He didn't get like penenked with a penalty, made some good saves. So looking forward to seeing Hart's name in the next England squad because he's done so well in that game. It's quite funny. We'll get on to the second half now in a second. Um, let me just read this long comment and see if I could put it up here. Okay, well, we got the half time. I think, is that the last picture of half time? It is. Let's put up Mahesh's because if not, I don't know when we're going to get to it. Celtic second half a train wreck. Celtic no composure and allowed Rangers too much ball and territory. Rangers penalty a symptom of Celtic's vulnerability on AJ's flank, which was apparent on the first half. Can't really argue with that. Uh, I don't well, think. Well, or... can, can I argue? Can I argue with that, Gal? So okay, I think you... that, I think there are mitigating circumstances. I think when the sheer volume of decisions, the 50-50s, the sheer volume that are going that way, we've got players like AJ who's incorrectly on a yellow card. He's seeing players 
getting away with worse without a card. We've had a couple of players carded by that point. I think we're underestimating how much Rogers has probably said to them, look, Beaton is absolutely gasping to send one of you off. I mean, he is looking for any excuse to send you off. I think that, you know, sits in the players' minds as well. They've done so well and they're probably looking to protect that 2-0. But they're also acutely aware that anything they do is going to be more harshly punished. So I do agree that, yeah, maybe we lost a bit of composure. But you do have to say that a big part of that is the refereeing on the day. So I have some sympathy with the players. Should we do better? Yes, we should always do better. But you do have to look at the, the mitigating factors or circumstances, in my opinion. Well, when you, when you look at the stats at the, at the end of the game, we finished the game with 23 fouls um, against Rangers 10. So um, we're, um, we're, we're, we're being awarded more fouls against us by a factor of 2.3. Um, and that's just ridiculous in a, in a, in a nip and top game. Where both teams, you know, you know, most people agree there's, there's not that much between the teams. So why are they getting 23 fouls and we're only getting 10? You know, we're not a no, no team, yellow card for team. Rangers either. No, they, 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 the no. players go into the fans to celebrate, which is an automatic yellow card. Goldson handles it for a penalty, yellow card. So no cards as well. I mean, I think if you're looking at it objectively, there's a lot of there's a lot of question marks about the Rangers fan John Beaton refereeing his uh, boyhood uh, club uh, I saw some I was watching some Rangers stuff earlier and they were kind of taking the lack of fouls committed by them and the lack of yellow cards as a sign that they weren't fighting hard enough <laughs> which I thought was funny but look we can't uh, avoid the elephant in the room any longer the dodgy penalty changed it a shocking decision says peg leg Lonergan Mickey Moynihan Never a pen. Disgrace. Well, shall we look at it again? Okay, so I think I, I'm going to try and play devil's advocate again here, and, but I'm going to let Stephen um, say all the definitely wasn't stuff. First. Hold on, Gav. Are you are you were you on VAR, by the way, Gav? Because you literally cut it before he touches the ball. Oh, there we go. Okay. Stephen, tell us what tell us your view on this. Um, I don't know. I find it I find it difficult to talk about it, to be honest with you. It was such a bad decision. Um, and there were so many things bad about it. When the, the first one was, you know, that John Beaton actually got it right uh, for the first time probably of the day. Um, and and didn't there was really no need for it to go to VAR. Um, Alistair Johnson has been pointed out many times. Gets a foot on the ball, um, and and his trailing and basically Silva runs into his trailing leg. Uh, takes a worst dive you're ever likely to see in, in a game of professional football. And um, you know the, the the yellow card for diving was exactly the, the correct decision, as Brendan Rodgers said in, in the post match press conference. And um, and again, as soon as as soon as the VAR gets involved, then you you know what's going to happen. Um, and I, I look, look at that penalty that gets awarded there in the context of the one we didn't get at Livingston last week. Uh, and you know, you talk about contact. And last week we spent all all last week we were told that you know not all contact means a penalty, and there's got to be sufficient contact for you to go down. And then we're presented with this guff here. Um, and told that this is a penalty kick. There's nowhere near enough contact on the, on his leg for him to go down. And it's blatantly obvious he's through himself. The ball's going for a bye kick. There's another Celtic defender covering. So he's never getting to it. So it's not as if he's denied any kind of opportunity for a cross. Um, and it's just a, a hideous decision. And either Beaton or the VAR, who, who was Nick Walsh, has just grabbed an opportunity to give Rangers a, a foothold in the game. Because at that point, um, it, it was looking as if it was just going to run away from them, but they were out of ideas at that point. Uh, but this, this, this turned the game. You see, I, I love a sense of outrage as much as the next man. I do. And I've been outraged in the past plenty of times this season as well. But, and I don't think this is a penalty other than the fact that 
I can see why all the elements are present, why it could be given. You know, you say, people say, oh, he got a touch in the ball. Okay, that doesn't mean he can't then go on to foul the man. I don't know. We don't know where the ball is going, but if you look at that still, the guy's eyes are on the ball. To me, he's still thinking about going after the ball. He then feels AJ's knee, uh, AJ's foot on his knee as he knocks AJ's knee out of the way. Obviously, there's not enough contact from AJ to cause him to fall, but there is but there is contact. As soon as he feels that contact, he's down like a sack of spuds. Uh, I think AJ, what was AJ's leg doing up, up there so high anyway? What was it doing he was, there? He was, he was getting a tackling in the ball, Gav. Like, this is what I don't understand as well. He got a touch in the ball, and he got the, the only touch. He had to manipulate his body to get the touch in the ball that he needed to. Now, if we're going to give penalties for what happens after you get the touch in the ball, I can understand if someone's following through or they impede him or whatever, but he's doing his best to defend running backwards, and he gets his foot in the ball. Rog, every football manager is going to say, look, make sure you get that ball if you make that challenge. It shouldn't be make sure you get that ball in the challenge and then remove your entire body because the player might run into you and give away a penalty because that's just not the way football is played and that's not the way that the rules should be applied. That's, yeah. to, to I mean, me, I'm, I'm not happy about it football. either, Ian. I'm not. But, you know, I think there are more obvious reasons like, to get upset about decisions than that particular one. I no, don't think it was a good decision, but it wasn't the worst. It's a combination of them, though, Gav, isn't it? Because we've got guys like Chris Boyd in Sky Sports who's saying the one in Kyogo, never a penalty, this one a stonewall. And we seem to be disproportionately the victims of some of these, along with, sure. I'll say, a lot of the other SPFL teams. And there's one, ones that get away with it. And we were playing the one that got away with it. And it was just ironic that, uh, you know, I tell you what, if that was at the other end of the pitch, we would not have had that penalty. And everyone would, would be saying, Would we be screaming for it? Yeah. Well, no, because we'd be like, well, they got a touch in the ball. Do you know what I mean? Wouldn't any of the impeding and all this sort of thing, it just would not happen at the other end of the pitch. Just would not happen. It, it, it seems to me, you know, Beaton, actually, that was the last straw for Beaton, for, for Silva and all his bullshit. And Dave and, and fannying yeah. around, and he made it. He made a decision instinctively and went, "You're booked for Dave, and you prick." And then, whatever transpired, transpired afterwards. He 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 made the decision, and yet VAR intervened. I think he made the decision based on there being zero contact, clear daylight between the two players, and and uh, Silva dived like he did all bloody day. And then whenever he saw that there was contact, that's what VAR was drawing his attention to, saying, look, there was contact in the box. And because and of the way the game to, has gone, which is a fucking nightmare, as John Clemens says. You have to says, ask the question, you know, was there enough? But, I mean, the question he should have been asking is, was there enough contact to bring him down? Because that's the law. I mean, there's not, as we were being told uh, after Kyogo's incident at Livingston, not all contact in the box is a penalty. So there has to be enough contact to bring him down. So that's my question to you, Gav. Do you think there was enough contact to bring him down? Of course not. I've said there's not. Well, it's not I mean, it's not a penalty then. That, that, that's just yeah. a, that's a law of the not, game. Well, I, I wouldn't have given a penalty myself, but I'm trying to understand where they're coming from and why that decision was made. And I don't well, think we know it was where the they're coming from. We, we, know, we, we know exactly where they're coming from. They, they wanted to get Rangers back in the game. He'd been trying to do it the whole. He'd be trying to do. It. We'll talk about another incident shortly when he tried to do it um, again, not long after. Um, but that, that's what he was trying to do. They were trying to get him back in the get Rangers back in the game, and he succeeded. He got exactly what he wanted. I know it's annoying. Anyway, they, so they got that. Again, well, there's no jeopardy as well for him in giving Silver that yellow card, because if he gives Silver that yellow card, then he's stopping the antics. But he knows he's got his pal in VAR that if there is anything to kind of pick up, because it has to be reviewed because it's a penalty instant, that's a very, in the context, all the 50 50s you can give them to Rangers because it's subjective. There are certain things within the scope of the VAR. So, so he knew. You think that he, even the initial yellow card was part of the Kabuki theatre? 
No, I, I think he wanted him to stop it because he would have to have sent him off. Like, and he does not want to send off a Rangers player at Ibrox. I'm just saying, I think if you look at it in terms of the his decision making on non bar instance, the vast, vast majority in the statistics back that up to Rangers. The bar ones are the ones that have held him to count. And like Stephen said, the biggest way that VAR held him to account was when he let the free let the foul that happened right in front of his eyes go, as he had been doing the entire game. You mean this one? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's the, that's the case. Of point. Look, where, look where he is. <laughs> I mean, in the name of fuck, look, look where he is. He couldn't possibly be closer unless he was making the challenge himself. And he's called, he's let that go. Now, the only reason that ends up getting getting flagged and looked at is because they go up the park and score. But if they hadn't scored from that move, if that ball had ended up going out from a corner and not in the, not ended up in the back of the net, you know, VAR would never have looked at that. So then that would have been just another another incident of him letting a blatant foul on a Celtic player go. And there were numerous ones like it all through the game which didn't lead to goals and so weren't looked at by VAR. Um, and that you, you can see him there, um, staring right at the right at the the incident, and a blind man could see there yeah. was the the, the Rangers player didn't get the ball and contacted the player, so it's a clear. I, I would say there's foul. no point in and an attacking that. area for Celtic as well. It was deeper. It was well yeah. into their half. So, bottom line is a bunch of cheating bastards. Said how it is. That's it. End off, and that's what we're up against. And unless Celtic fucking lawyer up. We're going to be doing this bullshit for the next 10, 15, 20, 30 years. Bottom line is it's cheating and it's exposed. The guys on Sky come out and they all ask, was it a penalty? Was it a penalty? Was it a penalty? No. Ian Crocker, not a penalty. Just, I wouldn't give it any or play, gentlemen. I, I Seriously, just speak to the lawyers. I've had enough. I'm sick of it. Sick of it. It's bullshit. Well Let's move on with the game then. Uh, Stephen, have you unfrozen? You were frozen there for a second. Yes, yeah, you I think you're okay now. Yeah. Um, all right. Ida to Yang. Remember when Adam Ida won the ball and he's down the left mm. and he crosses the ball, a low cross into Yang, who I think was absolutely dog shit the whole yep. fucking time he was on the pitch. That was a chance or a half chance, right? Ian? Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, it's another one that you want someone else to be arriving on it, like a Hatati or you know O'Reilly. Someone I think, in in defence of Yang, it's slightly behind him, so it's difficult to generate that power and get it on target. And it was a good block by the, I, I don't know what the the was it Sterling for Rangers. I think someone either scary. with a bit more composure or guile. Might have done so. Like Kyogo in that position is probably taking the touch, turning, and then putting it in. So it's just unfortunate that it, you know we've had a couple of those. Like we're saying, the Maeda chance. Uh, you know, if it lands to someone else, maybe the Yang. If it lands to someone else, just unfortunate. I think they're good chance, wrong player. San Francisco can't decide who was worse, Yang or Callum. Well, the two of them got together for another key moment, didn't they? Which was this one. Sorry for blocking you there, uh, Ian. You're back with us. This is McGregor's square square pass to Yang, who seemed just to be incredibly slow to react, didn't he, Stephen? And then disaster followed. Yeah, I agree with what you're saying. Yang, Yang was terrible. He was like a, a rabbit caught in the headlights. He just looked as if he was... As he has done him and many times this season, he just looked as if he wasn't at the level required to be playing in a game like this. Um, and 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 he went on he cost us a couple of times, as we'll talk about. Um, he looked very flat footed there. Not not a great pass for McGregor either. Um, so he has to hold his hands up and take some of the blame for that. Um, but if you look at you know even even if you look at that still there, you know we're we're well set enough defensively. Um, but we will just all at sea. Um, as soon as they broke on us, and that was the story of the second half. We just sort of lost our composure, uh, lost our ability to to stuff moves like that out, which we were doing really easily in the first half. Um, a lot of that was down to them getting their tails up a bit, having having got the goal. Uh, but a lot of it was down to us sort of. Just, I don't know whether we ran out of steam or just sort of 
got caught in the moment trying well, to set it's, it's, a lead it's, or something it's, like it's that. The thing that we've discussed quite a bit is that we just don't have that squad depth in terms of being able to continue what Rogers wants to do with it because he wants to retain the possession. And I don't think, you know, in an ideal world, he's bringing on a Yang or he's bringing on a half fit Callum McGregor. I just think those were his, I think those were his options because the other players were retiring because they put so much into it. And I think it's, you know, I, I look, I'm the last person to offer up excuses on a plate to Rogers, but he can only work with what he has there. And I know some people said, oh, Forrest should have come on. Bear in mind, Forrest has not played a lot of football and he'd be coming into a game that was at pace. Uh, the Rangers manager had brought on Sima on one hand, Maton to another, and it was about pace. And that's what he was trying to do. So I just don't think Forrest would have been an option based on pace alone, let alone match fitness. And it was Sterling who I think uh, won the ball there, who, who was really by far their best player i think all night well i thought i thought um Kuhn really had him on toast in the first half i thought Kuhn was causing him all sorts of problems and you know it was just a shame and you know couldn't get substituted extensively because he was on a yellow card uh he must be the first man in the universe to get booked for persistent fouling after his first foul um, so that, that that's another one he chalked down to John Beaton. So we, we eventually withdrew Kuhn. And I thought Sterling was very ineffective due to the, the fact that, that Kuhn was just giving him the runaround and he didn't know what to do with him. But when, when Kuhn went off, he, he grew in confidence and came into the game. Um, and, and he was he was instrumental in, in that goal. I thought Kuhn had a couple of moments, but he didn't really do that much. He tended to get sandwiched quite a lot, didn't he, when he cut inside? But, but he was he was progressing the ball and he was trying different things to get back and the, the difference is, and it's the same thing Maeda did with Tavernier, they kept them back. The biggest threat yeah. for Rangers is those overlaps from the back and both, uh, now I agree with you, could maybe not as effective as getting past and doing all that, but he was keeping Sterling back there, which was a big a big limiter in terms of how they played. But it's hard for him to grow into the game when he gets booked for, as Stephen said, his first, you know, his first... Well, it was, his, it was his first foul, Brian, and he and beaten with point in it, all the things, and it's like, well, but that doesn't make sense. He, he, yeah. he, Kuhn's not been at left back. He's not been at centre back. He's been nowhere there, but as Stephen's saying, that's a smart one for beating to give, isn't it? Because he's like, right, okay, we can put him in a yellow card and dampen whatever he yeah. might do based on some mythical... And the thing was, Beaton was given all the other fouls in the yellow card, so it was just, yeah, it was, was mad. Double standards all day. I mean, it's a new one on me, someone getting booked for other fouls that other players have committed. And that's, 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 that's gold, isn't it? I mean, I've never seen that before. No. And, and again, I think it was you yourself, Stephen, whoever was on the pod on... on, on on Thursday that they're not going to be as obvious. I didn't think Beaton was going to be as obvious as given, you know, yeah. the, the 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 big contentious decisions. It was going to, you know, it was like the maybe oh, it was a corner. I didn't think it was going to be as blatantly obvious as it was. But there were certainly he was certainly stopping the game and preventing us from getting any kind of momentum, even at 2-0. Well then the momentum took another swing towards them then with that goal. This is the SEMA goal. Uh, after McGregor gave away possession with that square pass, and it it hit McGregor's back, did it or side or something? Deflected it. Was it was it was it McGregor or was it Scales's leg? Uh, either way, it took a big deflection. The, the, thing, the thing is, if if they hadn't put a block in, even if it was Cal Mack or Scales, you know, it's a difficult one for Hart to save. So I think someone needs to get the body in, and it was. Do you know what I mean? Another, a bit more of a deflection that goes past the post, so it's just it's an unfortunate deflection. We really were dealing with a lot of the pressure relatively comfortably, but when it comes to deflections, you know, there's not not much you can do. That's just the luck of the ball. All right, so it was then two two, and Mickey from Rome was in our uh, group chat, and he was saying at that point he feared we were going to lose the game. Did anyone hear? At this stage, not think we had we were had severe jeopardy and potential to lose this game and get out of there with zero points. I definitely feared it. I thought I thought the writing was on the wall when they 
mm. got that goal. I thought, geez, a third, and then and then if if they had a scored a third, you you probably had one minute of injury time. You know, I I thought I thought Rogers made I thought Rogers made the best substitutions with the players he had at his disposal. So I thought bringing on Ida would probably have liked Ida a little bit sooner. Same with Bernardo. Um, but I think what you saw in the build-up to that goal is someone like Bernardo actually has a lot of composure in those in that sort of environment, which I think is a big plus point for him. Like he might, uh, uh, we'll talk about the Ida goal now, but when the build-up to this, he takes the ball really well, drives in, and usually you're thinking with a lot of players, oh, they're not going to be able to find the man. They're not they're not going to capitalise on this chance. Bernardo went right into the space, threaded that ball right into Ida, who took his touches and scored a fantastic goal. So I think all round, like, re- really good. I just wish maybe they'd been on a bit sooner because I think the composure of those two actually did start to kind of benefit us. And had they been on the pitch longer, we might have avoided the... The, the, their second goal, but this fantastic goal, fantastic goal. Yeah, I, yeah, think he, he was ex- I thought Ida was excellent when he came on. I thought he was absolutely brilliant, and um, I, he brought a new dimension to our game that just wasn't there before, and he caused them all sorts of problems. And I think everything that went up to him just stuck to him. Um, he was able to hold off their, their two defenders, and none of them could get near him, and he fully deserved that goal. I thought Butland probably. Um, would like that over again. It was pretty close to his feet, uh, and he seemed to kind of be caught out by how close it was to his feet. Um, so he didn't cover himself the glory there, but he done. Um, he did done really well to get the shot away, and it just capped off a really good performance by him. Would you have would... started him, Stephen? Say that again. Would you have started him? <laughs> no, I wouldn't have started him. I think I think it was correct. In fact, I agree with Ian. I think <laughs> Rogers. <laughs> I think Rogers got almost everything right yeah. um, in terms of team selection, in terms of when he made the substitutions. Um, and I know it didn't work out with Yang and, and McGregor, but nobody I don't think anybody disagreed at the time. When he, when he brought on McGregor, we were looking vulnerable. Um, yeah. and, and you're thinking, well, he's, he wants to shore up the middle of the park here, so he's going to go with a double pivot or uh, a Watan McGregor and take a tatty off it. I think that was the correct thing to do. Now, obviously, McGregor... You know, wasn't up to it, didn't have a great game and, and Yang um, was pretty terrible but I, I think the substitutions were all correct and the fact, that, uh, as we've mentioned already, that uh, an assist for Bernardo and a goal for Ida were two of the guys brought off the bench um, it sort of underlines that Well, Monty is urging calm, we need to calm down the criticism of Yang I'm old enough to have seen far better players than Yang cost Celtic at Ibrox Mickey Moynihan replies with Yang was as effective as a cone for the 3-3 equaliser. And he really was. I mean, this that is the beat drop of the shoulder from Matonda. And then... I don't think it was even a drop of the shoulder. Like, Jang, Yang's there and he's just completely off balance. He, he's, he's got all his weight on one side. He, he's almost begging him to go inside on his stronger foot. Um, and it's just a guy there with zero defensive awareness. You know, it's he, a winger. He's a winger. A winger. He's a winger, but you know, wingers in, in the modern game have got defensive responsibilities too. Um, and and he was just it was all at sea. And um, but look, you know, when when, when um Matondo's gone past him, yeah, you're not thinking he's gonna score. You're thinking he's gonna cross for the back post, but it's just a, a great finish. Uh, and you've got to take your hold your hands up for that one, uh, as Rogers did again in the press conference. It's just a, a really good finish, and you know, not not a chance for the goalkeeper, but Yang has got to do an awful lot better there. And Alistair Johnson as well wasn't wasn't tight enough. Um, he wasn't even in the picture there. I, I think he just ran out of steam. Maybe it was the, the booking for him and he was worried about getting sent off. But it, he he wasn't great at the back end of the game either. But um, that one that one was mostly... mostly I think by, by that point, they'd injected a lot of jeopardy into the game, Rangers. They'd brought on Cantwell... They brought on Matondo and Sima. They decided that to kind of get rid of the cloggers because obviously he thought he was just going to bully us. That was obviously their tactic at the beginning was just to kind of keep on kicking his physical players, etc. And then I think he decided, right, inject the jeopardy. We're going to lose a bit of maybe the strength. Um, but you could see players wide going down the side. And I think that stretched us. 
And I think, you know, that's probably something Rogers needs to look at. But that could again be personnel, right? It could again be personnel that Yang is the, the square peg in the round hole there. I mean, if we look at it, right, th this was their big moment and they, they, you know, ended up being three each. One was a, an outstanding goal, the third goal. The second, their, their second goal was a deflection and the first one was, was never a penalty. So really, you know, the, the scoreline on paper should have probably been 3-2, three, 3-1. Three, and that's, that's their you know, one moment of brilliance, a foot up by the ref and then a deflection. So that's that's their that's what they brought to the table, as well as obviously the referee. But I don't. Well, that wasn't the last they... action of the day, was it? There was another moment, a heart and mouth moment, where Desert suddenly looked like he could play a bit and had a shot, which you know, I, I, from think I think he see it from that Yeah. Well, it made me. Do a small oh, don't get don't get me wrong, Gav. I mean, it was heart and mouth sort of stuff. But then yeah. looking back on it, I think heart, yeah, I think heart had it covered, unless it was in off the post. Yeah, but it was an emotional experience, wasn't it? I mean, it was hectic. Look at all those things we've talked through. You can you're sort of reliving the sensations and the throbbing of your head and the dryness of your mouth. It was certainly an experience, wasn't it? Uh, Brian can't remember any of it, but for Ian and Stephen. <laughs> well, I told well, you, I'm yeah. my life that, that monitor. Yeah, and, and when you've been watching as many Glasgow derbies as I have over the years, you seem to realise that you know when to look and when not to, you know. And maybe I'll do the heart monitor next time. <laughs> Could be critical. Ian spot on. Clement's strategy was same as Gio and Bale. Man mark mid, stay close and try and run Celtic down. In the final 20 minutes. How does any of this make you feel about, well, let's say, the run-in except for the game against them at Celtic Park? Stephen, I, I was listening to, as I said, I was listening to some of their stuff earlier. And they're obviously, once the dust has settled, they're not so much celebrating the point. They're thinking, Jesus, that was brutal. They, they played us off the park for long periods of that game. We were terrible. Golson's gone. All this kind of talk. And they're also saying, look, it's far from over. All we have to do is avoid defeat there and win all our other games. And we've shown we can win all our other games. That's what the Rangers fans are saying. If either of these two teams are going to drop points against shitter teams, it's Celtic. What do you think about that, Stephen? Well, I think um, I, I would I would um, agree with some of what they're saying, and the fact that I still think they're in the box seat uh, because of the fact that they can they can um, they can get a draw. If they get a draw at our place, then they can still win the league. We we can't, you know, we, we need to win all our games. Um, but the the reason for their nervousness is because they don't have any history of winning. Big games yeah. in the league anyway. They do okay in Europe, but they've just never been round this course before. I think they've won something like one in the last nine uh, derbies. Um, and, and that I was a three jump that, time. That was 3 0. Yeah, and, and that was a dead rubber. Um, yeah. So, you know, they, they don't have any history of beating Celtic, and there's nothing to suggest that, 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 that they can beat Celtic at Celtic Park. Um, they think they they've took one point out of a possible nine uh, from us this season so far. So, all the all the evidence and history points to us scudding them uh, at Celtic Park in front of a full house where we none of their none of their idiots in the ground. Um, but you know you have to. I I feel as if I think both teams will drop something out with that fixture. Though I don't think we'll win all our other games, and I don't think they will either. Um, I think there's you know both of both teams have shown a vulnerability in certain games, um, and I notice we've got six games left, I think, and four of them are at home. But home games is, it has been the issue for us this year, uh, when teams just sit in with a low block. We, we've looked far better away from home, so I'm not too sure um, if that's just such a big an advantage as some people are making out. Um, but I think you know the late goal was definitely a lifeline for them, because if they would lost that game yesterday, um, then I think you know, the fans would have basically thrown in the towel. I, do you know what? I suspect 
because the thing is their head went at the end of that game do you know what i mean like you saw like fans like trying to throw things at our like players and and, and management and then at the end you saw i don't know what i mean can't really an emb- embarrassing guy at the best of times i don't even know what he was doing at, at full time and the way that um the manager is talking i do think there's maybe a little bit of their heads are starting to go because they've talked themselves up so much and yet they're sitting here with no wins against us they're so much better than us you know uh, all the stuff that they've been talking about like the their managers talking about they're the moral winners he talked about it as a victory and things like that and i just wonder if that's going to it's not a mentally strong squad Guys like Tavernian and Goldson have a massive history of their bottle crashing. And I just don't know. I There's a bit of me that thinks that we might take maximum points from now to the end of the season. And I don't get me wrong, I think it'll be tight. But I'm a lot more confident after that, given all the antics that happened and all the stuff that went on. Because Rogers is going to be able to use a lot of that game for motivation. He's going to be able to use Beaton's performance. He's going to be able to use the stuff that they did on the pitch at the end of the game. He's going to be able to use the Rangers manager's comments after the game. I think there's a lot there to kind of focus a team of winners. And I think there's stuff that a team of losers can use for excuses. So I hope it goes that way. Stephen Ray here pointing out Killy away will be crucial. That's certainly one that we're going to have marked in our calendars. A big circle around it. Um, and then John Clements has a point here. If there's one certainty, it's that we will beat them at Celtic Park. That's what I take away from yesterday's game, is that we will definitely beat them. I think it's we will a, definitely beat them at home. It's never a certainty, though, because you've seen, you know, the SFA have still got to play their card for that game, and, you know, who, who's going to get it? It'll be John beating the VAR, 100%. I'll tell you that. John beating will be in VAR for that game, and probably maybe... Um, Clancy, or, someone, or someone like that um, but there'll be there'll, there'll be antics in that game as well for sure because it just we just don't get games that crucial uh, without the SFA and, the, and, the, and their pet referees playing a part in it um, and I think you know we, we talk about the Celtic board an awful lot in this and we really have to they really have to exert some pressure on the SFA there must be something we can do at this point um, there's not a chance in hell that John Beaton should have been refereeing that game on the weekend. It was an absolute travesty uh, and something our, our board or our chairman, who is supposed to be so influential uh, in European and in Scottish football cir- uh, circles, something he should be weeding out at the root uh, because that, that, that should never have been allowed to happen. And, you know, the way the game planned out was exactly uh, as I was expecting it to. Well, I'm still feeling positive, I have to say, and I think we're going to beat them at home. And the big question is, what do we do in the other games? And what do they do in the other games? But uh, we've just lipped over the 100 people watching live. So let's have a quick message from, uh, well, I was going to say our sponsors. We don't have sponsors. Unlike all those other channels, peppering adverts everywhere. Hot dang. I only recently discovered a Celtic world. And it is totally dope. For Celtic fans in the US it's the bomb. And you know how much we love bombs. Subscribing? Hells yeah. Calv, could you not get Manscape to sponsor us? <laughs> I know I know you, you you were telling me you, you were used the product occasionally, you know, and my chance. We, we, we will like... probably talk about this funnily enough with a guest <laughs> next week. Next week, we have a guest coming on whose channel is sponsored by Manscaped, and I wanted to go down that particular rabbit hole. Is that a funny uh, term? Arse hole? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can I tell you, I, I'll tell you another reason that I'm slightly more confident. Usually after games where we've struggled or we've not done so well, we usually do have a couple of our friends from across the city in the comments with their usual while there's been a distinct lack of them which would suggest that their confidence is not um as it probably would have been if the draw was a good result for them they've been in giving it something so i think their absence is telling there you go that's a point that's been made several times today thank you donald 
Not know the chef. Uh, that boy know a chef, Donald Sheehan. Is he the famous chef? I mean, the some famous star? folk in the comments, yeah. Did anyone see Brother Gordon yesterday? Yeah, that's right. Man, I, yeah. I like the little comment uh, in the commentary. Did you hear them saying um, he played for Celtic? Uh, so he says. Or no, he played for Rangers. So he says. Aye. That was he, quite funny. he was at a pre season or something charity thing. He did. He never played for them. Did he take McCoy's ticket? Aye. <laughs> So was forty eight thousand hate crime was committed yesterday, apparently. Are we going to talk about the missiles getting thrown into the dugout as well again? John Kennedy. Let's talk about that before we move on to Celtic socials. Great ad be disappointed all that game. And uh, very little to be said about that. I think you know was it was I don't think it was last season, but the season before where one of our staff was glass. And Joe Hart had to pick the glass out. Then you had the other sort of incident that was Chris Sutton, his safety wasn't able yeah. to be agreed. Um, you know, now we've got the Rangers players having the barn at the end, something being thrown at our playing staff. Uh, someone even pointed out as well, do you think that Rogers maybe got a one match and a one match suspended because actually if they'd given him two and he had to sit in the stands, that his safety could be guaranteed? I think it's a legitimate question because it seems to be a very Rangers specific issue based on the evidence. I don't know. At some point, we're going to have to say we, we, we need guarantees uh, for the safety of our players and staff. And that's before we even consider fans going back to that ground next year. Um, and it's something, again, words and rhetoric are not enough. And rattling your sabre a bit is, is no good. We need to see action. And I think. With, with Rangers, you're getting close to the need for a for a for a stand closure, um, or even a full ground closure for a game or two, because uh, that's the only way you'll you'll stamp this sort of thing out. And as Ian says, it is a very Rangers problem. Well, it's all a bit of a pantomime, and of course, the villain of the piece was this guy. Look at this that absolute fake footballer. What is going on? I, I asked the question, Gab. I genuinely think that's probably the most individually embarrassing thing from a player in our league since uh, Lafferty yeah. uh, got Charlie. Old Bruce sent off of the red. I, I, I genuinely think that's, I mean, this is this is top, top level. And if I was at Wolves and I'd spent, what was it, like 40 million in him, Look I'd be him. wincing. I'd be wincing. I don't understand. He's holding his head, right? If somebody smacks you in the head, the leg doesn't go. What the? F and you don't have to roll up like you're getting your nappy changed like that. What the hell is he playing at? It's just we'll so be getting we'll be, we'll be getting them um, the Rangers podcast going. Oh yeah, he's winding up the Tim's look. He's got him. It's like no, this isn't winding. Most up. of this them are embarrassed by this guy, and rightly so. They are embarrassed. Even Rangers feel shame about this guy. I mean, how can you have him representing you? Nobody well, they've, right had, they've had Juve, they've had Herlock, they've Barton. Know, Barton. Juve, Juve ended his career pretty much at the uh, Saba here in Malaysia, my local team. Did you know that? Did he spit on the fans? No, apparently he was a real decent guy. <laughs> to <laughs> um, He's misunderstood, you know. Well, something else that's misunderstood is this... Uh, this celebration at the end of the game. Who who was it wanted to talk about this? Was this you, Brian? Yeah, it's basically says <laughs> Rangers celebrating the three three win. Just they're idiots, you know. Party party. I, I, I don't, look, I'm going to hold up my hand. I don't begrudge him actually celebrating that because to get a draw, <clears> given <throat> like how well we played to fight the referee. I think it's probably a good thing to celebrate. I think it's more telling that in his post match he actually called yeah. it a victory. He called it he a actually victory. Said a victory. Yeah. 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 You're definitely right. That'll be used by uh, Rogers. And then oh. this is a oh. this is a, a tweet by Liam. Uh Stephen, mm -hmm. this is yours, I believe. Yeah, but this is lifted off a Toddy's Instagram page. So he's posted that himself to his own Instagram page, and it's that classic hold me back picture there, where he, he's got no intention of fighting with anybody, but he's, he's just kidding on, he's getting held back, and to go and 
look at that picture and think, you know, that's that's pretty cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna lash that up on my Instagram. What an idiot. You know, that He's absolutely is an absolute fanny of the highest order. You know, I mean there's fannies have came and gone through Ibrooks many, many times, but he's got to be the prince of the fannies. He really does. Well, look at the state of that. I feel embarrassment for him, and generally I just let them go on with it. But actually, I was looking at that, I was going, "Oh my God, he's he's properly wee guyed himself there." I mean, he yeah. must not have he must not have good friends around him for him to be posting that. That there must be something wrong with that squad if he's not going in today, and they're all going here. By the way, Todd, what's that? By the way, you've made a right tit of yourself. Yeah, because your guy, your guy Lawrence, you know, if I can give him any kind of, he he, he was quite vocal. And, and speaking with Alexis Silva and moving him away. So he seems like a bit of a pro. Your guy, Tom, is that Tom, did he play for Derby? Tom Lawrence or something? Is that the yeah. same guy? He seemed, but he was he was trying to keep the other guys in check and saying, knock that in the head. As you say, Ian, if you're playing with that and you're coming in, I would just see what I had. Uh, yeah. Fucking hold me back. Piss off. Just idiots. Idiots, a lot of them. Okay. Well, is there anything we haven't talked about that we really need to cover? I mean, what was what was he doing at the end with McGregor? I think there was just a bit of there was a bit of banter flew between the two of them. Um, I just think it was maybe just a bit of verbals during the game, and you know they've scored a goal um, in injury time, and, and Cantwell decided to give it to, to. I think McGregor's probably going to shake his hand or something, and, and Cantwell's just took the opportunity to give him some verbals and. McGregor just kind of half pushes him away, and then um, Cantwell goes all wee guy on everyone and starts having a having a massive tantrum. Um, so I, I don't think there was anything in it, to be honest. Um, no, I he, think he you have to remember a, it's a very a massive very, dick of himself. It's a very dangerous thing to give it out and not be able to take it. Like you know, you can the amount of times that they lose the head. I mean, you just go back to Bruni laughing in their face, but like Scott Brown set the tone. There's nothing they can say. Like, our players will just laugh in their face, but they can't handle that. And I think that's what you saw at the end. Cal Max probably said something along the lines of, you know, mentioning about him getting mentioned in the press conference or something, or Cantwell giving it the big one and then only being a substitute appearance and, and doing nothing in the game. And then he just can't hack it. Also, Who's the Snitch keeps asking what happened to the show on Sunday. There was no show planned for Sunday. It was always too big a game. For us to be doing a watch along to so uh, it didn't happen if of course you're subscribed and you've hit the bell you'll be notified of when we go live so there'll never be any questions ever again michael ross ends on a more positive note i'll say one thing have you do the baldy look way better than clement thank you i'll take that as a compliment and in fact that brings us on to the final celtic social media <laughs> Of the week. This is uh, something you can do with your hairstyle if you're bald in the middle, but you've got hair around the outside. This is the Maracana look. <laughs> Jesus. That's Morelos. Oh, he's lost it. Morelos, isn't it? <laughs> he's literally half the man of Morelos's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's pretty great. That is. What do you think? Should I prepare that for the next show? Should I go for that? I think I'm missing this stand, though. I've got maybe this side and the back. <laughs> but the one stand is going to remain low. Unfortunately, I have. I think it would be Who's less um, less less maracana and more uh, spaghetti hat, maybe. <laughs> yes. Yes, <laughs> probably. Okay. So... <clears throat> Kaiser coming in at the end with a shouty. Oh, if we God, win yeah. the league, I will get that haircut. Brilliant. Okay, that will make it for a good well, yeah, I mean, you've done it in a public forum. That's him committed to it. Yes. Oh, we can leave leave now. Get, get the good table at Manscaped to uh, sponsor the event. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, I'm still happy. Uh, uh, we've all vented a little bit. don't think we all see everything exactly the same way but you know great scheme of things um we're not arguing about much and we all agree that a draw was not 
the end of the world and there's still everything to play for this season and we're in with a decent shot of the league, so fucking come on, I'm on the hoops. Hey, let's hear that. Delighted with a point, disappointed not to get all three. Yeah. I was thinking of calling the this show on the thumbnail disappoint. But uh yeah. too down with the But you're glad I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Way too subtle, Gav. <laughs> right. Let me hear how do I hide this current comment? All right. Well, well done, boys. Thank you very much for the chat today. Thank you to everyone in the comments. As we said, if you haven't already, please subscribe for future chit chat. Other than that, we will see you back here on Thursday for the next one. Until then, hail, hail. Hail, hail. Hail, hail.